Now, what should one admire most about a country? Well, it has to be its commitment to decency, justice, integrity and respect. And many Nigerians have been raised in accordance with these values. So why has it become impossible to put them into practice in Nigeria? Well, according to the theologian, anti-poverty campaigner and executive director of Lux Terra Leadership Foundation, Father George Husani, it is the absence of leadership integrity that has brought this country to the point where it's been scarred by some of the most unpleasant politics imaginable. And he uses several passages from Judeo-Christian scriptures to illustrate his point, quoting liberally from the book of Proverbs, for instance, that righteousness exalts a nation, but that sin is a reproach to the people. That when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice, but when the wicked rule, the people groan. That it is by justice that a king gives stability to the land. And where there is no vision and no leadership integrity, the people perish. In other words, where there are values and integrity among the ruling class, the people make progress. But where the leaders are illegitimate, corrupt, unjust and immoral, the people suffer economic stagnation and social discord. So how can we raise both leaders and an army of ordinary people committed to restoring these values? Well, for his unvarnished reflections on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the theologian, anti-poverty campaigner and executive director of the Lux Terra Leadership Foundation in Abuja, Father George Husani. Father, great to see you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you very much yes. indeed for coming in. When did things start to change for the worse and values start to erode in Nigeria? Because it hasn't always been like this, has it? It hasn't always been like this, but it has gotten progressively worse over time. Um, in my own lifetime, I would say from 1966, when some young men had the power of the gun and they took over power and began to uh, rule by decree. You can say that some of our traditional values that kept Nigerians or the, the populations that made up Nigeria that kept us going for centuries, we began to lose some of them from the beginning of the colonial rule. When some of the best leaders of communities were sent on exile, and people that could be described as scoundrels were picked by the colonialists, those that they could use against their own people, those that they could ask to sell their mothers, they were the ones, often, not in every case, that the colonialists picked and from then on, we have seen degeneration in values. And uh, you know that this is part of what Chinua Achebe reflected on in Things Fall Apart, uh, because he, he, he decided to title his book that uh, W.B. Yeats uh, poem, mm. the, 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 the Falconer does not recognize the, the, the Falcon, and so on and so forth. Uh, Things Fall Apart, and the center cannot hold. Chinua Achebe wrote that novel in, I think, 1961 before the coup of 1966. So he already saw that the values have been going down, we have been losing the values that hold people together. But between then and now, things have gotten progressively worse. We have had a succession of, of leaders, mm. of rulers that, that you can hardly really call leaders, that do not have the, um, the, the tenets, the ingredients that make for leadership really. I mean, such ingredients, you, you, you name some of them, such ingredients as self-sacrifice, mm. um, uh, concern for the common good, passion for the common good, which is really what patriotism is made, up, uh, made of. We have had people who are there out of self-indulgence to, to, to promote their own personal or perhaps occasionally group interests, but not the interest of the people, which is why when people get into power, in many cases, you see that they become multi-millionaires overnight, but the people get poorer. So you vote people from the village to the House of Representatives, to the Senate, to this position, and within a few months, their circumstances have transformed. They are now sending their children overseas for, 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 for studies. They, they have properties uh, overseas. But the people of the village, their circumstances have worsened. So what quality of leadership do we have? Um, and, and, and 
actually one can really, really describe what our situation as moral vacuity. Mm. Um, I say that it is like the elders are dancing naked in the marketplace, the, the naked public square. That's what really captures our situation. Um, young people are scandalized for the optimist time by the behavior of leaders. A situation where you can have 36 governors and at the end of their reign, maybe 10, 20 of them are facing the FCC um, uh, charges for corruption. And you know that some of those are, are true. It's very scandalous. Mm. Uh, and then a situation where today there is grinding poverty, near destitution of the people, and their leaders are living large. Their circumstances have... And don't seem to be concerned. There is... All. Look, <laughs> turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart and the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. This was written in 1920 by W.B. Yeats. It's, it's prophetic. It seems as if he was looking at the Nigeria of 2024 when he wrote this in 1920. Things have just fallen apart. Look at the issue of trust between leadership and the led. In the last few days, some videos have gone around about some, some uh, leaders who fought in public or tried to intimidate poor people. See the reaction of Nigerians. The reaction indicates that, as I have constantly said, the revenge of the poor is at the corner. Because people are getting really angry with the crop of people that rule them. Mm. Well, I mean, you've, you've identified very well and very passionately the problem. Okay. How can, and, and you, you mentioned, I mean, I read the article, I quoted from it at the intro, that really brilliant article that you wrote there, a speech that you gave. Um, you, you mentioned the, the big problem as the, you know, the, the lack of values, the, the fact that values have kind of gone away from society. How can we raise an army of, of people committed to restoring those values? I, I did say in that article that you read mm. that leadership integrity is critical to revamping values in the country. So you need to have, a, a first of all, a leader who has values, yes, who because, can then inspire yes, other people. You need to have a crop of leaders mm. at all levels, local government, state level, then in all sectors, religious, economic, and political, traditional also. You need to have a crop of leaders that are champions of uh, values for the society. It, it, it doesn't normally erupt from the people who are selling water on the streets or the vulcanizers. Not that they cannot have values, but it will not make much impact. But if you have leaders, just see countries that have made it. Yeah, but Nigeria. how do you do that? That's the question. In, see, in a country, let's, you, you've let's, outlined how corrupt everything yes, is, yes. from the electoral system to everything, to yes. the system that throws up the politicians, to the system that, that you know, accepts people in. Um, I mean, it, it's a very depressing scenario. Nigerians it? need to learn certain things. I mean, mm. there are many Nigerians that are complaining, but we need to learn certain things that um, cause and effect relationship between our leadership recruitment behavior and where we have found ourselves today. So you cannot pluck mangoes from oranges. So it means that our behavior when it comes to elections and uh, people recede to their ethnic uh, cleavages and you know religious cleavages mm. and so on and so forth when it comes to election. But we need to know that if what we need in Nigeria today are mechanics, engineers, architects. We need people who can fix a broken down vehicle. And it is not about people who say, um, oh, you, you were really yesterday, it is now our turn. It is, we, the country is collapsing. The uh, ship of state is sinking. We need people who have the skills, who have the wherewithal, and particularly people who can be trusted 
meaning people of integrity, because it is that integrity that will confer legitimacy so that whatever policies they bring up and say, look, we want to fight corruption, we the people will trust them because we can see in their lives, lives of integrity, lives of transparency. I understand the point you're making, yes. and, and that's a very good point. But my question remains how, because this country, as you said, needs to build a model of success for values. Mm -hmm. But right now, the current model rewards, as you have pointed out, vice and corrupt politicians. And virtue and hard work seem to be punished. In the last six years, a number of agencies in this country were working with the support of Makato Foundation, for example, working on integrity, promoting integrity in this. Working with agencies like ICPC, working mm. with all kinds of both private and public agencies to teach the values of integrity. Luxterra has been one of them. Well, I, I was going to ask you that because you run Luxterra yes, yes, Leadership yes. Foundation. Is that what you do? One there? of the one you're, of you're the trying to groom the next yes. generation. So, of leaders? for example, mm. we worked in the last three years or four years. We worked with four schools mm. where we accompany four schools, mentor them in integrity and honesty. To the extent that right now, in those, some of those schools, you have what they call the Luxterra effect. And the Luxterra effect is pointing to integrity. If the, any of those schools used to do exam malpractice, zero exam malpractice, zero t tolerance for exam malpractice. And we tested it out, and in some of our schools, the last WIAC result demonstrates that you can actually approach these exams with integrity, with transparency, and pass very well. Because we ensured that the people got the point that whatever you got by crooked means cannot take you far. And then, of course, hard work among the teachers, hard work among the students, commitment in the, uh, the, the administration. And we try to look for some resources, actually, to support those schools to have labs, to have uh, uh, good teachers. And even those village schools that didn't have um, labs, we try to get them um, a simulation system whereby they can sim simulate experiments because they don't have the appropriate right. lives. But, but is, isn't it very difficult? I mean, I, I understand the point you're making, and I commend you tremendously for the work that you're doing at the Lux Terra Leadership Foundation. I mean, it, it's one small organization, but you're, you're making even that little impact is important. But everywhere you go on this earth, that people say that the majority of people, and perhaps I'm speaking out of turn, but people say the majority of people are prone to, to vice. That the way that you prevent that from happening are sanctions. is by exactly having checks and balances. Mm -hmm. So the focus must be on law enforcement. That, that, I, I want as, to a, say, as a means of forcing people to do the No, no, no. I want to say right that thing. the focus should be on leadership integrity. Because it is the it is people of integrity in leadership that can ensure that there are yes, sanctions. Yes, I, I agree. Uh -huh. I, I do agree. The, the lack of sanctions mm. today in this society, the widespread impunity in this society, mm. is superintended. They are superintended by the kind of uh, characters that are in leadership. What we have today is actually state capture by a gang of. I yeah, but, but you've identified the problem and, you, and you've identified it, you know, quite well. But I mean... The, okay, what to do about it? Yeah, because I mean, even in your article, you, you say that what is alarming and deeply worrying, and I'm almost quoting you there in this country, is that it seems like criminally minded people are finding their way to all more levels easily. of political office yes. much more easily than people of integrity. How do you reverse that? How you reverse that, like I said, you have to begin from primary school. You have to begin from parenting. Right now, a lot of people have been badly parented in this country. Yeah, but we've got 2007 coming up. Yes. How do you change things? 2007 coming, well... 2027, um, sorry. 2027, yeah. we, first of all, we have to change the Electoral Act. The, the, the hunter has learned to shoot without missing. So the bird has to learn to fly without perching. So a lot of those things that were capitalized upon, those loopholes that were capitalized upon uh, in the courts, mm. uh -huh, we have to see how to check that and do another revision of the Electoral Act. That's one. Um, next is that the judiciary, we have to look at, the, is it a country run by the technicalities of the law or is there morality 
in the law in in the dispensation of justice because what we saw in the last election and the aftermath is that technicalities of the law were used mm. to disenfranchise people were used to install people who clearly in the eyes of many people did not win elections but they made some mistakes here and there in the way they packaged their case before the law yeah but when you've got what you've identified here you've got criminally minded people who constitute the majority in office you've got people who you know arguably lack integrity in virtually every field in, in this country government sort of law enforcement and all the rest of it what could be the disruptor of the political class in Nigeria that would move them in the direction of being more value driven between now, for example, and 2027? I mean, I know it's Be not, between you know, now, there's yeah, no magic wand. No, there's no but, magic, but between yeah. now and 2027, some of us just have to keep calling on these people who hold positions of power that if you do not change where you are going, you will end up where you are headed. And where are we headed? It's destruction. Uh, it, it will yeah, not but, be. but for these people, they don't think long term. Well, we need to they, help they, them. They don't think, because if they thought long term, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. We need they to think help short term, them. and they think, I'll just do my stuff, no, take we, my we money, need, and go. We need to help them, the right. blind, those who are deaf and dumb and blind, we need to help them to see that there may be no 2027 if certain things are not put in place now. Because people are angry enough about the aftermath of the 2023 elections that there may be no 2027 unless certain measures are put in place. So whether they like it or not, it is in their own interest, in their survival interest, to ensure that we, they listen to the people and put certain things in place. Because quite frankly, where we are today is not a good place to be. Uh, see the anger in the land. See the anger on the streets. I am even afraid about how, how can we continue with the level of poverty and destitution we have now? How can we continue for the next three years? You know the big problem here, Father, and, and you know, again, I, I commend the, the things, I mean, I agree with the things that you're bringing up, but the problem here is that all that anger, for example, that manifests itself in criminality, you know, mm -hmm. um, gangs running around the place, armed gangs and, you know, um, bandits and so on and so forth most of the people they tend to attack are the poor people are the poor people so in, in many ways the, the the guy the people you're referring to have garrisoned themselves and nobody can get close there, there, to there, there is an extent to which those who have garrisoned themselves there's an extent to which they can protect themselves uh, it that it does get to a point people say oh um and nigerians it never gets you push nigerian to the wall and he will break the wall rather than but it will get to a point that uh, Nigerians will not be breaking the wall that they will turn back. And I have been pleading for years that, look, when I say the revenge of the poor is at the corner, it may take 10 years, it mm. may take 20 years, but we know what happened in the French Revolution. We know what happened, that the, prince, the princess was told or the queen was told that there is no bread, and he said, you guys can buy cake. Now, that is because she, they had no, she had no sense of what the people were feeling. And we are having the same kind of circumstance mm. today. But of course, the, 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 the first revolution essentially was replaced by, I mean, the people who were taken out were replaced by Napoleon, who became a dictator himself. He himself, yes, that's true. But the point is this, that a dispensation, you know, I have, I, I said it somewhere that, look, it is not in the course of nature to hire islands of affluence amidst a sea of poverty. Mm. Something will give. I agree. Yeah. But let, let me say this, Father, because we're, we're virtually out of time and it's been brilliant talking with you. I mean, you've written some pledges that you think Nigerian youth should commit to memory and recite them daily about how to create a new Nigeria. I, I don't have time to get into it now. Um, but I'm sure people can reach you, you know, yeah. um, on, on the internet and so on if they're interested. But before we go, after what has been clearly a rather depressing discussion about Nigeria, cheer us up with one thing that could make this country look better to the world. If the people call by my name, we read in the book of Chronicles, chapter uh, 7, verse 14, if the people call by my name, humble themselves, repent, change from their wicked ways and begin to do the right thing, the Lord will forgive us and he will put us back on the path of prosperity and peace. Meaning that 
there is still time. We can use the remaining time we have to change our ways. And I put a lot of responsibility on the leadership. People say that the people get the kind of leadership that they deserve. But sometimes that is unfair because of the many honest, credible Nigerians who are doing their best. We don't deserve the kind of leadership that is punitive, that is uh, exploitative. So let our leaders change their ways, become leaders indeed with concern for the common good, right. with a sense of sacrifice for this country, then their legacy will be celebrated. Okay. And I believe that the people have been so resilient and I believe that the people will forgive the, 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 the sins and the atrocities of our leaders and I am a believer in hope. I mean, preachers right. sell hope. Okay. So we hope and we believe that Nigeria can be transformed for the better. On that note, I want to thank you very much indeed. Father George Ehusani is a theologian, anti-poverty campaigner, and executive director of the Lox Terror Leadership Foundation in Abuja. Thank you very much. Thank you, indeed. Charles. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for watching.